Hello everybody, and this is Hadron with another review with Knights of the Frozen Throne. This is my fifth review for the cards, and we're going to cover the cards that have been released on Friday with the live stream from Matt Pace and Day9. Uh, I am a little late with the video, so I do apologize about that, but we're going to get right into it. Kicking it off, we have Spreading Plague. It is a 5-mana druid spell. Uh, now, summon a 1-5 Scarab with Taunt. If your opponent has more minions, cast this again. So this is an interesting little card. It's a card that will cast itself multiple times, considering that we meet a couple of conditions. Uh, this condition is, one, it's going to do a check every single time it's cast, including the first time it's cast, to see whether or not your opponent has more minions than you. And then if they find that your opponent has more minions, it will summon a 1-5 Scarab with Taunt. The Scarab is a beast, so there might be some minor synergies there. And it's a Taunt minion, so it will come back with the Hadronox Taunt effect, Death Rattle effect, that summons taunts. You know what I mean. So this is the um, five mana. It's very expensive. So how does this card gain value? It gains value in the repetition of the card. So after the board check, it'll check the board again. And if it finds that you still are lacking minions over your opponent, then it'll summon another one five Scarab with Taunt. It'll keep doing this until you have just as many minions on your side of the board as your opponent does. And that's exactly how this card reads. It's not going to just cast it once. It's going to cast it for as many times until you have as many minions as your opponent. So it's not quite like Unleash the Hounds in that regard, which it has been likened to a card like Unleash the Hounds or Protect the King in that regard. But that's not exactly the case. Uh, those cards will summon as many minions as your opponent has. This card will only summon 1-5 taunts as long as your opponent's board is bigger than yours. So it will even out the board state. It won't put you ahead in any regard. It'll only even it up. So a 1-5 with taunt is valued at probably about 2, maybe 2.5 two mana. Uh, so if you, think about, if you think about Sludge Belcher, Sludge Belcher was a 5 mana minion. It was a 3 5 with taunt with a death rattle to summon another taunt. So it was pretty much two taunt minions uh, at three attack and then at a 1 2 with, uh, with basically a Goldshire Footman. So at five mana, that car was considered very powerful in the meta that it was in because it was just a solid body that you had to get past. So. How does that rate this card? I think this card's pr probably comparable good if it's casted three times. So basically, you have to be three minions behind your opponent, and you play Spreading Plague, and I think you're doing okay. I think this card will be doing just fine if you're playing three. Would probably be what you're looking for. Um, four would be really good. I think five is fantastic. But you have to think of the board state. At what happens if you have to play this card to get five minions for your opponent to beat down? Because by the time your opponent has five minions on the board and you play this card, they're more than likely going to just attack and kill off all, if not all but one of those. So you may have just bought yourself one turn at that point. So that's why I think at three, it's probably worth playing. Now, the fact that it costs 5 mana is a downside because it might be a little bit too expensive to play against a uh, more aggressive deck. By the time you've gotten to 5 mana, you're either behind on board or you're just starting to build up a little bit of board yourself and you're not going to get that much value out of this card. This is a sit-and-wait kind of card in control games. And it's probably not going to be good enough to play in a control matchup, but it is very good against aggro. I like the concept of the card that gets to cast itself. So that little double cast feeling I've actually played around with myself in the past. And I, I like the condition and I like the fact that it's not really too powerful but can have some very good situational use. And that makes for a very flexible card. Um, also, the taunts come back with Hadronox. Also, the taunts can be buffed with uh, other cards from Druid like Mark of the Lotus and Power of the Wild uh, to make them even stronger. There's also some cards that we're going to see in the in the meta that uh, activate when you summon a card, like Knife Juggler. Um, some probably some new cards that come out that synergize well with Taunts or with Druid in particular. So we'll 
wait to see what those are. And until then, I actually think this is a this is an all right card. It's pretty good. We have Shadow Blade is a three mana three two. Uh, no, it's a rogue weapon. I'm sorry, I, for some reason I just couldn't see the color there. A rogue weapon. Uh, that actually kind of makes it worse. And I'll tell you why in a second. Battlecry, your hero is immune this turn. Now, the Battlecry is actually fairly powerful. The problem is it's a rogue weapon at three for a 3-2. Um, if you were to put this in just about any other class, I think it would be played pretty well. My opinion on that is very skewed in the fact that I think rogue can do a lot more with three mana than just play a three attack weapon. Um, yeah, I'm not exactly sure about this one. Uh, the battle cry is unique in the fact that it puts it puts a condition on the board that's not very common, like hero immunity. We have a card like that that does that already. Violet Illusionist that was released in the Karazhan expansion that does virtually the same thing. Uh, and it is played somewhat in Rogue, but just not in any variants that run combos, not in any variants that run... Uh, not in Quest Rogue, for sure. And just kind of situational board clear for a weapon. Um, it probably works with the lifesteal weapon. Oh, I'm sorry, with the lifesteal spell that you can put and make your weapon have lifesteal. So it's, you can attack, kill off a minion. It does zero damage to your hero, but you restore three health instead. And it just makes it kind of a weak true silver at that point. And even true silver champions starting to see less and less play. So I kind of think the card's not really all that great unless you have a weapon buff for it. Or, in the other case, since this effect is a battle cry, once you play the weapon, you can play a different weapon. Or you can play the weapon, attack with it, and then just replace it. Play the weapon and buff it, and then replace it with something else. Ah, that, that's not going to work. I'm sorry. Uh, you get what I mean. So I think the weapon itself is just kind of bad and rogue in general, since there's other things that you can do for three mana to generate the same effect. Um, it really just depends on if the whole tempo kind of like weapon, poison, board control rogue deck is actually going to be a thing, if this is going to see play. But other than that, you really just kind of have a weapon here. It's really good for arena. It's a very good arena weapon. And uh, very good arena weapons are hard to come by. The problem is, is that Rogue kind of didn't need that. Again, why I think that this card probably shouldn't have been in Rogue. Uh, this is another card that Rogues can play to generate some board value. And the health game is something that Rogues play a lot for arena, especially since you play for tempo. So you use your weapon to kind of stave off a lot of your opponent's cards so your board can do the work. And the fact that the hero gains immune with this weapon is probably just as good as any other 3-2 in the game for Arena. Um, so I think it's a really good Arena card. It's probably almost a broken Arena card, um, but probably not good enough for Constructed. So now we have Cryostasis. It's a two-mana Shaman buff spell. Now this one has also got a little bit of controversy behind it. Uh, a lot of people don't really understand why what the interaction is with the freeze effect for your own minions. And I I don't understand the confusion, to be honest. We've had freeze mechanics since the beginning of Hearthstone, so I don't understand why people are questioning this mechanic all of a sudden with this card. Uh, it's uh, give a minion plus three plus three and freeze it. Okay, so you give a, a, a minion a buff. Uh, the cheap cost to a high buff kind of encourages you to play it on your own minions, uh, but the freeze effect is the downside where it just misses its next attack. So your minion that is that you play, the next time it's supposed to be able to attack, it won't be able to attack. So you're not going to be able to play a minion and then freeze it instantly and it'll just be unfrozen next turn. No, that's not how this mechanic works. It's just the next chance that it has to be able to attack, it's not going to be able to attack. Just like if you play a charge minion... But if you freeze it first, you can't attack with it. Now, in that case, it will be able to attack next turn. But in only that case will it be able to attack. It's because it has charge. So that's the controversy behind that. I just wanted to clear that up a little bit. 
but give a minion plus three plus three and freeze it. Now, you're encouraged to play this on your own minions, true, but you can also play it on your opponent's board just to try to stave off a little bit. Now, this is the card that has synergy with Icebreaker, the Shaman weapon. You can just destroy the minion. Well, that's the problem, is that you actually take three damage, three extra damage doing that. So, is that worth it? No. No, it's not worth it. Just hex the darn thing already. Stop trying to be it. Stop trying to make Icebreaker good. It's not going to work like this. Just play Glacial Shard if you want to kill off something. Um, now, this card actually has some synergy with the next card I'm about to reveal. And that's actually the Shaman Legendary card, Marabi. Six mana, four, four. When another minion is frozen, add a copy to your hand. Now, this is actually kind of cool. Uh, no pun intended. So... You can use your controlling freeze spells that they're kind of pushing with Shaman in this expansion to gain some value. Uh, this card wants to be played behind the Voodoo Hexer, which freezes a minion when it does damage to it. It wants to be played with Glacial Shard. It wants to be played with Frost Shock. It's a very high combo, very value potential card. Um, so it's really cool. Well, I just don't think it's going to work that way. I just don't think it's going to work. You're probably only going to see this card in those types of decks. And this is probably going to be played over that weapon any day. Uh, it's a control shaman card, kind of. Yes, it does generate value. Uh, on the condition that your opponent freezes it, there's the dream, of course, of having two or three freeze effects when you play this card immediately. Like Cryostasis, like Glacial Shard, like Voodoo Hexer that's already on the board. Um... It kind of puts your opponent in a pickle when you play both the Voodoo Hexer and Murabi if they have a board, which means that they're kind of de, de incentivized to attack your taunt minion, even if it does kill the taunt minion. But they're kind of already in that position because the minion has freeze. Uh, so they're definitely not going to attack with this card up, even if that taunts up. So playing the card is just kind of whatever at that point. You can use it proactively is about the only chance you have with this card. If it lands something big, then, wow, I mean, that's a good job. You can attack and you can freeze a Tyrion Forgering off and gain a Tyrion Forgering yourself. Cool. Shamans could use a Tyrion Forgering. It's awesome. Uh, anything else below that I think is just kind of whatever. There's probably some synergies I'm missing with that here, but it just seems like in a general case it's not good enough. Uh, it's definitely a terrible arena card because 6-mana 4-4 four, four is just bad. I have high hopes for some really powerful synergies with the card, and it's probably going to make some pretty cool highlights. And in a control game, uh, you probably have some big minions you can copy with that effect. Uh, it might be worth experimenting with. I just don't have high expectations for it at all. If I'm underestimating the card, then fine, but I stick my bad decision. We have Defile. Two mana Warlock spell. Deal one damage to all minions if any die cast again. So here's another example of a repeatable spell that will cast itself. Now, you have a lot of other tools and a lot of other decks that generate virtually the same thing. The problem is this card is in Warlock. And I think that's a very big hindrance to this card in general. If it, I think if it was for most any other class, it would see a lot of play, regardless of what board state they're in. But this is in Warlock, and it's an anti-aggro card. It's a very good anti-aggro card, don't get me wrong. It is very impressive. And it also harkens back to those uh, ICC Heroic 25 days, where you had to avoid the black puddles on the ground, or else you risk blowing the entire raid off the platform. Uh, so it's very cool flavor that way. But it's just not strong in a control matchup. Uh, but it does have some pretty awesome synergies with spell damage. Now you've got Kobold Geomancer. You've got Blood Mage Thalnos, which are some very cheap, very low health um, spell damage minions that can synergize with this card and actually make it pretty powerful. So... If your opponent doesn't have any one-health minions on the board, let's say they have, I don't know, Sunkeeper Terum. So they have three damage minions everywhere. 
Well, you can play this card with Blood Mage Thalnos. So if you play a Blood Mage Thalnos on the board, and then you play this card, you dealt two damage to all minions. Well, that didn't kill anything except your own Blood Mage Thalnos. Now, again, the interaction is it's going to do a board check. It's going to do all the death rattle effects and animations. You draw the card, Blood Mage Thalnos will die, and then the spell will get cast again. Oh, since your spell damage just died, it only does one to everything this time. But, since everything now has three health, you just dealt and killed off everything, and then the spell will cast itself again. So, it's actually pretty cool. Uh, it has some really very high damage ceiling depending on what the board state is. It is it does depend on the board state, so it is kind of conditional in that way. But I think it's a pretty cool card. I just don't think it's very good in a control matchup. But I do like playing Warlock just about as much as I like playing Paladin, so I'm definitely going to play with the card, and we're going to see how well it does. Doomed Apprentice, 3 mana, 3 2, Mage Minion. But this Mage Minion kind of has that weighted block to it. Your opponent's spells cost one more. So the spell counter uh, cards are coming out. And we kind of have to take a look at them a little bit closer because I think if you have enough of them in the same set, you might actually have a pretty good counter deck. Um, it does block spell counters, uh, spell combos, in the sense that if a lot of spells like to be played in pairs of sets of two or three, so if a pair of spells like a quality consecration costs six mana, with this minion, they cost eight. So an Eight mana spell combo that was supposed to cost six is actually very impactful. It's a lot more powerful than it seems. Uh, so cards like Innervate don't really work with this card. Cards like Prep don't really work with this card. So by itself, by, I mean, just by that standard, this card is actually very good. Now, will it see play? It depends on the meta. It depends. Uh, this is this is the three mana, you know, tech card that seems to be all over the three mana realm nowadays. Uh, that counter is a specific type of deck or a specific play style. This card is probably very powerful in a mage mirror deck. It's probably pretty powerful against priest, and it's probably pretty powerful against druid and rogue. Not so much the other classes though. It's actually very weak against the other classes. So I kind of feel that the card is very good, but it really just depends on the meta, because by itself it's a very bad body. But by denying your opponent that chance for them to play a Spiker Steel on turn 7, and then you can flame strike their board instead the next turn. Um, or I'm sorry, they have to play they can't play Spiker Steel on turn 6, they have to wait until turn 7 to play it. And then instead you flame strike their board, now they don't have anything to play it on. That kind of counterplay can happen with this card just by playing it on the board. So that alone, with all the other suggestions I mentioned, makes the card really good. Again, depends on the meta for you play, but pretty good. It might actually be okay in Arena too, because there's a lot of spells that are used in Arena that are very impactful that like to be played on curve, and this card denies that. Could be pretty good. Eternal Servitude. Uh, four mana priest spell, discover a friendly minion that died this game, and summon it. Alright, so we have a half price off on remove from amber. I'm sorry, free from amber. We get a 50% discount on it. So a four mana spell that summons a minion that died this game. So you have to have played a minion, have it killed off, or kill it off yourself, and then this spell can bring it back. Now, this is a resurrect effect in a way. We have had resurrect effects in the past, in the past that are that were more random, like the resurrect spell resurrects a random minion that died. We have Onyx Bishop that resurrects a friendly minion that died. This spell kind of reduces the RNG by giving it a discover tag, and it's really cool. I actually really like the card. Um, is it powerful? It has some very good powerful potential. Sure. Um, if you want to bring back a five five with this card. That's pretty good. Anything weaker than that would have to have some really powerful synergies with what you already have. Like, uh, uh, Shadow Priest. What's the name? Uh, where it inverse your healing into damage. 
I can't think of the name for right now. But uh, minions to that degree, like Priest of the Feast, like Yesera, like most Death Rattle minions or very big impact minions, you can also kind of tailor your deck around to where it only brings back specific minions from your deck or from the that have died the game. But you kind of have to tech it around. You want the minion to die first, and then you can use this card to summon it again for double the value. It's a late game card. It's not really intended to be played with smaller minions. However, it can. Uh, if you want to have more of a mid-range deck and you just want to bring back a Northshire Cleric, sure. You spent four mana doing so, though, so that's really that's really bad. Um, it's a dead play if you haven't had anything cleaned off, so you might want to put minions in your deck to play this card. Um, it's the kind of card that you want to put the right balance of minions to spells. Um, and that's kind of something that priests kind of do very well. They just kind of have to stave off everything else to get it to work. So having another card that does that may, may not be good, but it's definitely got a lot of potential. Dead Man's Hand. All right, this is the warrior card we've been waiting for, ladies and gentlemen. This card, shovel a copy of your entire hand, every other card that's in your hand, into your deck. So every single card that I've reviewed up to this point Every single warrior card that was ever marginal or bad because it was never worth putting in your deck. Good news, you can put every one of those cards in your deck with this card. So this card is very obviously very powerful. You have the potential to never fatigue yourself. Um, like if you have a handful of cards and you have two dead man's hands... You play one of those, you shuffle the rest of your hand back into your deck, and then wait until you draw that one again, and then you just play it again. And shuffle all the rest of these cards back into your deck. Well, you're also shuffling a dead man's hand back into your deck, too. So you're always going to have a copy of it, as long as you have the other one in your hand. Which means that you're always going to have cards to shuffle back into your deck, which means you'll never fatigue. That makes the card incredibly powerful. If you have very efficient, very cheaply statted cards that help stave off the game, like Bring It On, I said Bring It On was pretty terrible. This card actually makes it pretty good because uh, if all of your opponent's spells or minions cost two less, it doesn't matter if they cost two less than that. If you play it again, you just gain 10 more armor. Well, you just gain 20 armor from one card. So if you have a third copy, you gain 30 armor, you've effectively doubled your health for 6 mana. It doesn't exactly matter what your opponent has at that point. So yeah, I think this card is exceptionally powerful. It's going to carry the archetype by itself. Depending on whether that archetype is good to survive in the meta is yet to be seen. But hey, I mean, that's the deck right there. You've got half the deck list already. Have fun with this card. Have fun playing against this card. Oh, that's got to be a headache. And then we have the final prince revealed for the set. Prince Valinar. He's the four cost of the princes, so four mana, four, four. Just a basic stat line like all of them. His battle cry is if your deck has no four cost cards, gain lifesteal and taunt. Excuse me. So how good is that? I think that's actually okay. Problem is, is absolutely nobody's going to take out their four drops for this card. Um, again, you don't have to build the deck to where it has no four cost cards. You just can't have any four cost cards in your deck. So if you've drawn them or if you've played them, uh, then if you play this card, it has life, steal, and taunt. The problem is, is that this card to get maximum effect out of life, steal, and taunt against aggro, you need to have no other four costs in it since that way your opponent has to trade into it. Um, it's only one mana more than Wicker Flame Burn Bristle, but it has double the stats, um, which kind of makes it better for the lifesteal part, but not really for the taunt part. I think if this card had five health, it would be very powerful. Uh, so that's probably why they made it four, so it could actually be more balanced with the other princes, of course. 
By itself, it's terrible. So it's only kind of an eh arena card. And in arena, you're probably likely to have few four drops, but you are likely to have at least maybe three or four. Um, a lot of constructed decks can actually do without their four drops. Like a lot of the very aggressive decks. And so if you play this minion with Lifesteal and Taunt, if it works in an aggressive matchup, that's actually pretty good. You put the Taunt minion out on the board, and you can guarantee yourself a little bit of extra health, which can help in the aggro v. aggro matchup. Lifesteal is always going to be good in the control matchup. Taunt's always going to be pretty good in the control matchup. So, I mean, it's not terrible. But it saves you a little bit of health, or damage. And you gain health in the process. So I think it's just kind of okay. I think this is actually kind of a marginal card. Uh, it's just... But I think if any of the princes aren't going to be played, this one's probably going to be two out of the three. So... It's going to be one out of three. I'm sorry. It's going to be the second most played of the princes um, over Kelazeth. So, with um, Taldoram, of course, being on the top. So, I actually think this is... It's flavorful. It's okay. And uh, we have the last card on the stream. Or, actually, it's the last card on my review. It's the first card they revealed on the stream. It's the one we've all been waiting for. Since two years ago, when they made a Murloc version of the card, it is Snowflipper Penguin. It's the Wisp of the set. It is a beast. Zero mana, one, one. And it's cute. I like it. But I do want to take a minute and talk about something else about this card, but more than just this card, about beasts in general. So what we're going to have to keep an eye on from now on is that the beast tag actually has about twice as much weight as it used to. Um, not only because of synergies that exist with other beasts in the, in the entire game of Hearthstone, but because of the hunter's new hero's hero power, build beast. So what this is, is basically the card text of game plus one plus one on your build a beast. So if you take any other beast in the game and you give it plus one plus one, that's what this card does. The fact that this card was printed makes every other marginal beast card playable. And you don't even have to put it in your deck. Isn't that crazy? That's a, actually a crazy concept. This card is spectacular in the fact that even if it's never played, it makes a total, totally new impact on every other beast in the entire game. And I think that's one reason why they never printed the card before this point is that it's not that they never really had a point to fit in a beast. It's just that a zero mana beast is incredibly powerful with special synergies that exist for the beast. And this might be the best reason that you can give is for build a beast. So, and it just kind of seems like with the bear shark we had the other week, they get the tag of can't be targeted. They're kind of putting those tags in the build a beast set to kind of diversify it a bit. So... This is kind of like the tag of plus one, plus one. And kind of in the same way that adaptation works. Uh, but you don't have to play a card that adapts a minion. So, my opinion about this card by itself? No. My opinion about the card as it pertains to the synergies that exist with it? Yes. I love the card. <laughs> Despite the fact that it might even be a joke when you look at it at first... It's cute. I mean, how can, how can you not love this card? I mean, come on. It's a penguin. It's cute. And it's a zero mana beast. Huh. But that's my review for the set. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Like my videos, subscribe to my channels, and we will come out with new content in the future. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you on the next review.